Father God, we're just so thankful for today. We're thankful for each person that's here today, and we're thankful for the opportunity to honor our mothers. Now, Father God, we ask you to ignite that power in the men. We ask for continuity of thought, clarity of speech, and we ask that the Holy Spirit fill this place. And Father God, we ask that your will be done. In your name we pray. Amen. Now, I cannot do this by myself. I'm going to need some help. Is there anyone out there that will help me? Good morning and happy Mother's Day. My name is Deacon Harold Woodland and I will be reading from 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Now when I read that scripture, it sounds like a definition of my mom. I could easily take the word love in verse 4 and replace it with her name. Catherine, Virginia, Jackson, Woodland. At the age of 91, when she lie on her bed, hours from certain death, I said to her, Mom, how are you? And she said in a very quiet voice, I'm fine. I'm fine. Mom had used that term many times in her life, but this time it was special. I'm fine. Now this is the mother who had taught me how to tie my shoes, how to dress myself, how to sew, how to iron, how to cook. But she said, I'm fine. I lay thinking, why is this? And then I came to realize that at the age of 91, on her deathbed, she was still teaching me. She was teaching me faith. Faith because she had no doubt in her mind that she was going to join her Heavenly Father where she could love Him forever.
morning, Hope. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers here. My name is James Ippolito, and I'll be reading from Proverbs 6, 20. My son, keep your father's command, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Bind them always on your heart. Fasten them around your neck. When you walk, they will guide you. When you sleep, they will watch over you. And when you awake, they will speak to you. This scripture tells us how important a mother's teaching is. Her godly words will lead you, watch over you, and talk to you. Our walk in life is a journey. There are twists and turns, hills and valleys. Your mother's foundation will carry you through. I recall some of my mother's words. She would tell me, have faith, be kind to people, help people, and there's always hope. Oh yeah, she would say, eat your vegetables. For all the mothers here today, you should know how important it is still to tell your children, you are smart, you are kind, and you are important. God, our God is awesome, and he's placed an awesome mom in your life. Come on, put your hands together.
Gregory Seffo, husband to Frida, father to Ashley, Brittany, Courtney. Before I begin, I would like to reflect on some of the mothers in the Bible, starting with Mother Eve. She is known as the first mother. She bared children without any guidance or teaching from nobody. She learned on her own how to care, love, and nurtured her children. Under her motherhood, Cain, Abel, and Seth were born. I call this an act of endurance. Mother, Yoshiba, the mother of Moses, to avoid the mass slaughter of her son. She set her baby adrift in the Nile River, hoping someone would find him and to raise him. I call this act an act of perseverance. Mother Bathsheba, the wife of David. After all what had happened in her life, the death of her firstborn son, she continued to be loyal to her husband. God blessed them with another son. They named him Solomon, and he was loved by God. I called her struggle an act of loyalty. Mary, the mother of Jesus, the most honored mother in the Bible, she suffered enormous shame and pain, but yet she never doubted her son for a moment. She had to travel across many miles of desert just to give birth to Jesus. I call this an act of determination. Now, it brings me to where we are. On this day, I stand before you. I say to all of the mothers in this building, I know there were struggles, heartaches, despair. You endured, persevered, and you were loyal. 
with determination. But somehow, you kept the faith. I call this act of survival. You made it through. Looking at Proverbs 31 chapter, 10th through the 12th verse. A wife of noble character, who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. Looking at Ephesians chapter 5, 25th verse says, Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her. To the men, whether your wife is a mother or not, we know how much we need them. Ask yourself a question. All the things they do with us and for us, how would we survive without them? We know we cannot survive without God. And in my opinion, if we love our wives like Christ loved the church, we can't survive without our wives either. You are a survivor. We need you to survive. Oh Lord, I need you to survive.
You know, I struggle with that song. I pray for you. You pray for me. I won't harm you. Words from my mouth. We do the exact opposite. Now speaking to the men and to the sons, to the fathers, we have to do a better job of praying for each other. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. Did we harm our mother or our wife this morning? Maybe yesterday? Maybe right now, you're not even speaking to your mother or your wife because of words from your mouth. So powerful. And these are simple, simple words. I pray for you. You pray for me. I won't harm you. I don't want to hurt you. So why would I say things that constantly, constantly do the opposite? We disrespect our mothers. We disrespect our wives. So today, why not today? Men, young men, speak to your mother, speak to your wife, and say, you know what? I want to pray for you, and perhaps you want to pray for me. But one thing is for certain, I won't harm you with words from my mouth. our last song as I mentioned earlier I really like to say that because when you say that it makes you sound as if you know what you're doing up here right so I just want to thank on behalf of the men you know a few people two very special mothers Victoria Wanda why don't you stand so people can see who you are And I want to thank our leader, DeAndre, and, and his team. You know, I, you know, now I could, I, I could admit it. So Friday night, 9.30 p.m., after the worship team has done their thing, we snuck into the building, and we rehearsed. And it, it was tough because, you know, the pastor tends to be around quite a bit. <laughs> so, you know, but it worked out. But that's what we did, and I just want to thank all of the men for putting in the time and the commitment. we would use to say how we feel about mothers, wives, sisters is grateful. We're just so grateful for everything that you do. Do we show our appreciation on a consistent basis? No. We try, but we know we don't do that. But the one word that really tells us how we feel, that word is grateful. We're grateful to God putting you in our lives. And we're grateful to each and every one of you for being who you are.
family. Happy Mother's Day. My name is Anthony and I've been attending Hope Cathedral since the summer of last year and ever since day one it's been a numerous amount of miracles. We've had our questions answered and more importantly our relationship with God has grown drastically and that's what's most important. So that's why I'd like to share this scripture with you. It's Ephesians 6 verses 1 through 3. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may have long life on earth. Now, before we close, I'd like to wish my wife a happy Mother's Day. And I'd also like to thank our pastors along with Hope Cathedral for making everything possible.